Welcome in, ladies and gentlemen. Very special opportunity here. Partnered up with our friends at the FCA. We're going to talk a little bit about not only the fantastic fundraiser that they have going on and, and coming up very soon, but we're going to talk about the new leadership positions, uh, the guys that are in charge, and, and we're talking to the heavy hitters of the FCA right here in the Steel Valley. Uh, so at this time, we are, are going to waste no time. Ladies and gentlemen, for the first time here on YSN, we are bringing in a guy that we want to introduce you to all across the valley, all across the YSN uh, body of networks. Ladies and gentlemen, I introduce you in his first year of uh, leadership here, Mr. Bernie Bennett. Bernie, how are you, buddy? Thank you. I, um, as the fam as someone famous always says on his radio show, better than I deserve. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know about that. I mean, you've done in incredible things uh, in the midst of your first year here. Um, I, I hear nothing but great things about your leadership and, and the, the, I mean, the servant uh, leadership here for FCA continues to grow under your tutelage. So for, for you, when you stepped into this role, what was one of the most important pieces of the puzzle that you wanted to make sure you solved? Well, I, I think, you know, in continuity, I, I think has been a, is, is a big word for us. And unfortunately, continuity is one of those things you can't just speed ahead and do. It's a day-to-day -day building process, but really establishing the fact that, you know, Lord willing, I'm here for the long haul, that my commitment is, you know, uh, you know, I think in terms of decades in, in my role here. So just establishing that, that understanding and relationships are always going to be the the, the key to what we do, um, you know, I stepped into this role, um, you know, we had a long time uh, servanthood with Bob Kimple, who has been in, with FCA for multiple years. And I just wanted to, you know, really step in and let people know, hey, I, I'm here to be a part of this uh, for the long haul. Uh, you know, the continuity people need to see that people are in place for, um, you know, a, per a long period of time. So I, I think just establishing that, 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 hey, I'm here and my desire is to be here for the long haul and, and, and to help grow this ministry. And I, and I talking to you in, in previous to, to our interview here, uh, it, you are rooted, established in love with this position. So when you look at, you know, the things that you're looking to not necessarily change, but to lift and raise up that has already been, been done so well by FCA and the leadership here, what are some of those things that you say, hey, I can tweak this a little bit, maybe pivot and not move, uh, and we can go on a nice path towards success? Yeah, I think just establishing our, our role in the community and in, in, you know, amongst churches, amongst schools, you know, we, we, that's our area where we thrive. You know, um, when someone supports FCA, they're not supporting me, they're not supporting our staff, they're not supporting our board. They're really supporting their community, their town, their school district, their neighborhood, you know, because we're plugged in, we're engaged right where they live. So I think just continuing that, you know, there's a, it's a multi uh, point ministry. You know, we, we talk about camps, campuses, churches, and community kind of our, our, our FCA four C's. We just want to dig deeper. And, you know, oftentimes you think in terms of how big can we get, how wide can we grow, how, you know, how far out can we spread? We really want to dig deep and we really want to become a, a fat part of the fabric of communities that we serve in and serve with. I love the fact that when we started talking uh, and you said your, your goal, your objective when you were a, a little bit younger, a puppy, if you will, yeah. um, was that you wanted to be an AD. You wanted to be a coach. Uh, that's where you saw yourself. Yeah. You are. You, yeah. you found you found your role here more with maybe maybe a general manager uh, from yeah. this perspective. But wh why was that so important to you? What drove you into that, that the leadership position? of a, well, athletic director, a coach and things of that nature. And, and how does that tie up to what you're doing right here with the FCA? Well, like a lot of young people, I, I, you know, I love sports, played little league baseball, played the game until, you know, I ran out of places to go. No one was <laughs> standing in line, give me a scholarship. So, you know, after high school, it became pretty clear that five, nine, one, one fifty five doesn't, doesn't necessarily go real far. Uh, but I love sports. I love, I wanted to be around that. I want to be around youth and kids and, yeah, when I was a young man, graduated college, my dream job would have been an AD uh, somewhere, you know, and um, and so FCA, you know, has come up, uh, you know, come along in my life at a point where, you know, uh, like so many good things that have come to me, my wife has been a part of that early on in this, you know, she's, when we met Bob Kimple, we met some others in the ministry and just started, you know, looking around and volunteering and doing some things. You know, my wife said, you love Jesus, you love kids and you love sports. Mm -hmm. You know, this 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 role was is made for you. And, you know, really at that point is when I really started to consider the opportunity. And then, you know, in, in a short period of time, you know, the opportunity presented itself to 
to be a part of this. Um, to be a, to be a servant leader is my greatest desire. You know, titles are important for clarity's sake, and you know we have to have them at times. But really, my desire is just to be a servant leader. Um, it's easy to say that. You know, it's, it sounds good, right? On buzzwords, uh, yeah, yeah, on something like this. But but that's my heart, and and I hope that you know actions speak louder than words, and that's my my greatest desire is to be a servant. Absolutely love that. And as you know, leadership comes in all different forms, and and you know, I guess my biggest interest is. For you, a leader needs to know kind of how they lead and how they best lead. And, and mm. what, for you, what is that? I mean, when you think of your best quality of a leader, what is that that you bring to the tail, Bernie? Well, I, I think um, helping plug people in where they strive and where they serve. One of the gifts I believe that I have is being able to recognize people's gifts and how, you know, plugging them into a place where not just best for the organization or the ministry or, you know, or the company in, in my background, but where will they thrive and where, where can they get, you know, to be where they're supposed to be. So really I see myself as, as a bit of a, um, you know, person who just sees that and distributes people if, you know, for lack of a better term as a distributor, you know, I was a point guard when I, when I played basketball and, you know, I, I got as much, I got as much satisfaction out of, you know, hitting somebody with a pass that led to a layup as I did scoring one myself. So that's what I enjoy about this role is I get to help people further themselves, better themselves, where, you know, what they're calling is what God's called them to and just be a, you know, be a part of that. I've seen that play out of my life where I've just been a facilitator uh, for people to grow and, and, and bloom in, in areas where they've been called. So that's, I get great joy in that. Naturally, as a point guard, you got to keep a, one eye on the scoreboard, the other eye on the court. So for you, this when you look up at the scoreboard for the FCA, how do you rack up points so you guys are, are prepared to win and, and to succeed? I think by by fostering relationships and growth and, and, and finding people that, you know, like I said earlier, that really want to, you know, it's tough. Being, it's, it's never been easy growing up. Sure. But I think we live in a time and a culture, you know, in the world where, you know, it, it's really tough being a kid. And, you know, we're, we just want to find people who love kids and want to do things right way for the right reasons to make impact in this life. But, you know, we're all about eternal differences. You know, we're about the differences that we can make here and now, uh, but all about, you know, helping helping kids find that path to a good life here and, and the eternity with, with Christ. I mean, that's that's what we're all about. I think one of the coolest things, obviously, when we're talking about scoreboards and success this fundraiser that we're about to talk about, the, the golf uh, outing, it, it, I've been a part of it for, for several years, probably five, six years now. Um, you know, it, it's, a, it's a joy for me to be a part of. It's a joy for me to help you guys raise money for because to me, without this fundraiser, you guys are kind of left in the lurch a little bit from mm -hmm. some of the objectives that you need to do. Because there's some big swingers, some big hitters coming out for this golf outing, not just literally on the course, mm. but, you know, they, they help your, your, your fundraising efforts. For you, when you look at this, this being your second time through, mm. what are some of the important parts and, and the pieces that need to happen and, and are still available for other people to step up and take advantage of and, and be part of your mission for the FCA? Yeah, it's, it, it's a great way to look at it. You know, this is one of our major fundraisers for the year. I mean, this this is how we do what we do, uh, and as and as good hearted as as people are, and as much as we desire to to work in these areas of ministry, you know, someone once said that um, you know the gospel is free, but ministry costs money, and you know it takes it takes money to do what we want to do and grow the ministry the way that we want to do it in this world. And so the golf outing is it is a great time, beautiful course at Youngstown Country Club. Uh, you know, it's a, it's a wonderful event, but it really does allow us to springboard and to go and do the things that we're called to do, to go into the world and make disciples, you know, and, and reach young people and, and teachers and coaches. And, 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 and this is the way that we do it. It's great exposure. Um, you know, it's, it's a great fundraiser, but it's also a great time of fellowship. And I think it's helpful to, to see, you know, as much as we can do this to gather people in one place and say, hey, this is what we're about. This is what we're striving to do. Because I think most people have a name recognition of FCA, but they're just like, wait, who are the people who, who are the, who, you know, who, who is where and, and what are they doing and how do they do it? I, and so really, you know, there's a, it's multifunctional, you know, it's, it's a great fundraiser. It's a great golf course. You know, it's, it's a great competition and people have a great time doing it. But really, I think from my perspective, putting people in the same room or the same space, letting them see who we are, what we do and, and you know, how we do it. I think it's, there's a great benefit to that as well. Do we have any, um, who's going to be speaking, any people that are out there for uh, for the first time maybe that, that you want to 
kind of accelerate on this the show? Well, we're working on a surprise, what we think might be a surprise that I'm not ready to release. Okay. Right now, but there's there's something in, that we're trying to do that would be a pretty cool surprise for people. Uh, we really we really strive to you know make it informational, but we really want people to have a good time and to come out. So we'll have some video, uh, you know, some things going on video and some introductory things, but we really want to keep it moving. We know people come there, you know, to golf and to, and to have a good time. So we don't want to bog them down too much with, you know, with a pitch, but we, we may have a surprise and, but we always want to keep our mission and our ministry, you know, out in front that we're so much built on relationships that we just want people to kind of see us in our, I guess our natural habitat. <laughs> but uh, hey, if your natural habitat's a golf course, I, I like that yeah, habitat. Right, right? It, could, it could be worse. Yeah. Bernie, thank you so much for your time. Greatly appreciate you. Looking forward to uh, continuing to build our relationship between YSN, the FCA, and naturally between you and I, man. Looking forward to it. Congratulations. Appreciate it, DJ. Lo love the time. And thank you very much. You got it. And welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Another great interview coming up. A guy I've known for a very long time. Uh, second only to BK, who we'll talk to you in just a moment. <laughs> uh, but ladies and gentlemen, at this time, we bring in the board president of the FCA here in the Steel Valley. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Sean Summers. Hey. Good to be in studio with you, DJ. Hey, the new digs. The new digs. The I new digs. Not, not too far away from home for you, so a little bit closer, so we could talk a little bit more. Um, yeah, but I think it. the thing that I want to talk to you about most, being the board president, I mean, you're a guy that's had a heart for this organization this mission for such a long time. You've served in many capacities. Everybody knows you as something different, right? Yeah. Whether it's a businessman, whether it's a coach, whether it's a guy in the community or here in the FCA and so many other things. Yeah. For you, why does this line up with your your life's mission and, and why do you continue to do it, um, you know, out of the goodness of your heart? Yeah, you know, I was thinking about that. You know, I, I like to say I didn't find FCA. FCA found me, really, because when you're involved in serving and whether it's, you know, my own kids, raising my own kids involved in athletics, you know, we all know that we, the reason we're, uh, that people watch YSN, people uh, go to the events because we we love what sports teaches uh, about life and skills, but it's getting to the the heart of the matter when it comes to kids. And, and, and like Bernie had shared, you know, there is a lot of um, difficulty today with uh, kids in sports and we're addressing a lot of the physical prop, you know, things that we need to address. But we got to get to the heart of the kids because that's the reality is getting to the heart. So it aligns with my value system because I feel like, you know, we are um, we can't just be businessmen in the community or business owners in the community. We have to, if we want the communities to be the kind of communities that we want, we've got to be involved in the community and the next generation of kids coming up. So uh, FCA found me. I am glad that FCA found me. Um, it, it was a great relationship I, I developed with Bob Kimple, and then I got to meet you. And uh, just, just love. sorry about that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, you came with the territory, I guess. But uh, you know, some of the greatest people that I have in my life are people that I've met through ministry. And at the end of the day, being on the board yeah. uh, uh, of FCA Steel Valley allows us the ability to work and be the support in the ministry for those that are on the front lines that are day to day in the schools, on the fields in the practices that are encouraging those kids. Let's dig into that a little bit. You made the the great analogy that you are kind of the the skeleton yeah. uh and and they are the muscle the you know the yeah, the, 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 the skin tissue. all that stuff. So so in your role how do you take that and and how do you build upon what the FCA already has to make it stronger from the foundational standpoint sure. as opposed to the quote unquote window dressing. Sure. Well, first of all, we don't have to reinvent the wheel. We're talking about FCA, yeah. uh, Steel Valley, but we're talking about FCA at large. Yeah. We're talking about an organization that's been around a ministry for almost 70 years. So we don't have to reinvent the wheel. So most people know that in order for any ministry to take place, um, you have to have a solid board that is supporting that ministry. You have to have that infrastructure, that skeleton, so to speak. Mm -hmm. And and we present, we pro uh, provide the framework for those guys to have the freedom to work in the ministry and not be worried about some of the things that are necessary that come with the territory of having an organization, uh, a nonprofit organization or anything uh, of the like. So we work on development, uh, which is helping to raise funds for the organization because nothing happens unless like, you know, we have, we have funds to do ministry. Sure. Um, and then uh, we work on communications, which you have been a real big part of that, allowing us to uh, get the word out and make sure people know about the fantastic things that are going on 
um, because um, social media and media in general mm -hmm. is absolutely imperative that we that people know what's happening. Um, and then, of course, we have a prayer support you know team that is working on um, supporting, praying, walking beside our uh, area reps that are in the field that are doing the day to day in the ministry kind of work. Um, so all those kind of go together, and it's uh, kind of our role as a board to make sure that we are um, giving them the, what's necessary to be able to do all the ministry. And there's an element of recruitment, right? You're looking for sure. the right people to build from the, the inside out. So when you're looking for people to join the FCA and, and fight in the mission that you guys believe in and, and everybody should believe in, what are you looking for? And in, 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 I, I guess in essence, what do you, what was the perfect candidate? If you're shining the bat signal up there, yeah. what are you looking for? Well, okay. So the litmus test really, <laughs> and that's kind of what you're asking. Yep. The litmus test, you know, I would, some people would say it's different for a board versus what we'd be looking for, for uh, somebody who works in the field and the rep. Yeah. At the end of the day, love God, yep. love people. Pretty good start. That's a pretty good start. That's kind of the, the, the command, but, but who are those people? Yeah. Well, they're, they're other people, but they're, but we got to love kids. So if you're, you know, it's, it's fellow Christian Christian athletes. We're working with kids in schools. Yes. We're, we're ministering to and through coaches because who spends the most time with kids? Coaches have more impact yep. than anybody Influence, has yep. in, in their great influencers. So we do have to be cognizant of the fact that we're ministering to the coaches, but ultimately it's through the coaches that we reach the kids. So the, the test is, do you love God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength? Do you love people? And do you feel like it's a responsibility that we have to reach people to make a difference in their lives, whoever those people may be? And uh, boy, if we can knock, check, check those two boxes off, we get those two out of the way, then now it's, what is your skill set? What do you bring to the table? Are you a better kind of person to work in the ministry where you're on the uh, on the street, sort of be the hands and feet, you're in the school or you're working with a coach. Is that your gifting? Is that your talent? Is that your heart? Or do you have some skills like myself as a businessman running a business for the last 30 years? Do I have a skill set that is uh, more lending itself to the fact that I can help support the ministry through raising funds and do something that maybe somebody who's working in the ministry can't do or is not as gifted to do. So it takes all of our different talents, abilities, and and, uh, and, and comes together. God-given, yeah, of course. God-given, of course. Um, so if, if somebody's watching this right now and it's speaking to their hearts, how do they reach out to you? How do they get involved with this mission to, to get started as soon as heck this this fundraiser absolutely yeah and this fundraiser is a big big deal because the fellowship we have there it's a great place for us to be able to not just tell our story through social media no offense to you dj social media is great yeah and 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 uh internet is great but there is nothing like being shoulder to shoulder yeah. we as men we do things a little different than women yeah you know m women do ministry face to face mm -hmm. uh and they look at each other in the eyes and they have their emotional responses guys do ministry shoulder to shoulder yeah Guys like to golf together, hunt together, fish together, uh, ride motorcycles, in my case, together. Uh, and, and that opens up doors. And so that's why we love the golf outing, because we get to do something, you know, that men, not that women don't, but men love to do yeah. is we golf and we get to share. And, and there's opportunities for me then and for Bob and for uh, Bernie to be able to share, you know, what kind of roles are available and where somebody might be gifted. So, um came around that a different way, but no, I like reach it. out to, to uh, Bob Kimple or uh, Bernie Bennett or myself, uh, because we are looking for people who have giftings in the area of leadership on boards. Um, not a huge time requirement, more than anything, love God, love people and be willing to say, hey, at the end of the day, I've made a difference in my community. I love it. Sean Summers, yes. thanks as always for stopping by. Always a joy to have you, man. Yeah, Good luck great. with the mission. Good luck with the fundraiser this year and keep doing what you're doing. You're killing it. Thanks so much. And welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. This next guest that we have representing the Fellowship of Christian Athletes, Steel Valley, a guy that I have known literally since the day that we started here at YSN. The first interview that ever occurred here at YSN was with this gentleman, and I am just so anxious and so happy to uh, to have this one. Ladies and gentlemen, Bobby Campbell. <laughs> BK, I mean, it's it's so great to have you. I mean, we look seven years ago, and what FCA has turned into is, especially here in this area, 
the brand of FCA Steel Valley has grown and grown and grown and grown. And I feel like it's uh, it just keeps on going. But it, it's a guy like you whose vision said in this valley, you started this up and said, I believe that God has a presence here in a big way. And here we are sitting here seven and a half years later, and you have done the, everything that you told me you were going to do. Not exactly linear the way that we thought it would be, but that's how God acts. And you told me that from the jump yes. as a business owner, you said, it's not always going to be a bicycle ride, smooth sailing across. Sometimes you're climbing that mountain. Sometimes you're sliding down it for you. What has this journey been like uh, the last just seven and a half years, let alone when you began this baby um, in, in your ride mm. to the top, I should say. Well, I, I would say trying to do it my way was the biggest mistake I made right off the bat. Sure. You know, trying to use my skill set, which was very limited. Like if we all humble ourselves and realize that, you know, we don't know what we're doing, <laughs> you know, and then you realize that, hey, if I follow God, things happen. That's it. Once I figured that it took a few years, but once I learned, you know, my life first and my dad, and my mom kind of. You know, we talk about drills in sports. They mm -hmm. kind of drilled that into me. You know, if you really want to own your faith, it's not on your parents' coattails. It's not going to church. It's not going to FCA huddle. You know, it's about your personal walk with Jesus Christ. And the scripture is to trust in the Lord with all your heart. Yeah. Lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him, and he will make your path straight. That's Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. And that was my life first very early on. You know, my dad took me through the gospel as a young man. Now I get to do that yeah. as a staff person with FCA, you know, with coaches, athletes, teachers, whoever comes across our path, you know, and if, if you don't let go, you can't let God. And yeah, that's how it works. <laughs> I love simple. that. I, I'm, you know, I'm a shy kid from Columbiana. Right. You know, we were just talking about, you know, joking with Bernie and Sean about me being the big hurt. You know, there's no way. I'm just a skinny kid from Columbiana that I had some athletic skills, but I didn't say anything. I didn't say anything until I was probably 25 years old. Yeah. But you can't just know the gospel. You know, we're called to be mission, missionaries yeah. and messengers and representatives and ambassadors for the gospel. And, you know, it took me a while to, to get that. You just don't lead by example. You got to sometimes open your mouth. Yeah. Yeah. I think one of the biggest things that I've seen in, in, in your navigation of being captain, you know what I mean? Of, of everybody I've done. And Bernie, we've talked about, everybody sees you. Every time somebody picks up the phone and says, hey, I'm from FC. Where's Bob? <laughs> Where, yeah. Where's Bob? There's there's a little bit. I mean, in, and I kind of I, I share in that with you because every time somebody, somebody talks about YSN, it's OK, well, why am I not talking to DJ? For you, there's a lot of power in that, but there's also a lot of humility because you've been able to help other leaders rise above. And you, and that's what leaders do. Leaders, great leaders do not create great followers. They create other great leaders, which you have helped do. And you found great leaders to help in your mission. And I think that's one of the biggest um, strengths that you have and, and what I've been able to see. But talk about the challenges of that. And, and, and you kind of bury your head sometimes because you're like, man, I, I want this guy to rise up. And it's kind of like being in a shadow sometimes. Mm -hmm. And you identify that. Yeah. How do you, how do you kind of yeah. move on from that and, and let people lead in a situation where everybody looks to you as the leader? Yeah. I mean, you gotta realize the Holy Spirit's the playmaker, you know, uh, you, you can't force people to do things. You know, it's, you, you know, he's working on them 99.9% sure. of the time. Um, you can nudge and you can ask and you, but you know, one, one of the things I've learned is you get to a point where let God make the play. <laughs> and, you know, if you, again, if you trust that he, he's going to do a thousand things through that person rather than you force and you can't be a dictator. Yeah. You know, sometimes you got to lead by consensus, but sometimes you just got to trust you know, and that's, that's the key to open any door. And one of our, you know, our key way to really ignite people is called E3. That's our discipleship process, engage, equip, and empower. You know, God's always engaging people. And if they're coming at you, then you realize, okay, that the Holy Spirit's have done his work. You just got to put them in a position where they can make those plays, you know, so it's engage, equip, and empower. You know, we want to we want to keep our huddles and our engagements in every community, whether it's golf outing or, you know, leading a huddle or working with a local team. You know, for 
if we're making it fun and engaging, that's one thing. But if we take it to the next level where there's some equipping going on with God's word, God's word is where the power is. You, you asked about power. Yeah. You know, you mentioned that comment. Our 30 is empowerment. So yeah. engage, equip, and empower. So turn the ministry over to others. You know, my job is to turn the ministry over to others in the community. We can't be 50 or 60 different places, you know, once in a week. That's impossible. Sometimes hard to hit 50 or 60 schools in a year. Yeah. But if we empower the local community where you love where you live, you know, you care about the kids and the coaches, the teachers, the sports teams, the churches, if we all work together as one team, game over. I think one of the coolest things that that I know about you is you care so much for these kids and these schools and these student athletes. Um, second only to your own grandchildren, by the way. Happy uh, congratulations, Poppy. Um, why? Why, why? And I know that that's a loaded question with what with one one word. But why do these these kids mean so much to you? Kids that you don't even know yet. It's our relationship with God the Father. If we understand how much He loves us, you know, and then we can spread that out. You know, as a dad of four daughters. There were some challenges, you know, when the boys started coming around and they hit <laughs> junior high and high school, come on, right? So uh, there's an understanding, you know, the Bible talks about knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. Yeah. Okay, we all know the boys are going to come around, you know, but navigating that, you better have a good playbook. Mm -hmm. You know, the Bible is a good playbook or having a mentor in your life is a good playbook. I have great mentors. A lot of these young people don't have mentors in their lives. So there's where the opportunity is. If we go out into the community and we understand we're not just sitting in a pew, get off the bench, make a play for Jesus Christ in your local school. It doesn't matter if it's third grade through yeah. Youngstown state, you know, all age groups need a mentor. We still need mentors. As sure. adults. So if we don't have a mentor, we don't have accountability. If we don't understand the father's love and how much he loves us and forgives us 70 times seven, then how are we going to, how are we going to make that play, yeah. you know, in our own family, you know, winning starts at home first. Mm -hmm. Okay. So if we win at home or if we win as a coach, we coach behind the Jersey to the heart of the player. Then we understand that's knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. So that's how, that's how it works. It's incredible. I, I mean, just you, such a great leader, first of all. So, so thank you for that, for mentoring, not just uh, these kids in the schools, the coaches, but also Yours truly. I mean, you've been a huge mentor for me. Uh, every time that I feel like I'm in a little bit of a conundrum, it's either you or Dan Yagley. So hey. it's it's just whoever pops up on that phone first. Um, Dan Yagley, that's a good name. He's he's, he's an, an okay guy. He's, an okay he's guy. he's a decent human being. Um, for, for for you, I mentioned earlier that you've been a part of this. Um, that the time that I've known, right? The FCA. When I th when I think FCA, I, I think of Bob Kimple. For you. To see this fundraiser, this this golf outing grow the way it has. I mean, it was you weren't begging people when it started to get there, but it was everything but, right? It was, hey, just please come, please come, please come. And it has grown exponentially. The funds have grown exponentially, blessed beyond measure. You've got to be looking at like the, the same way that you look at, at your girl sometimes as a proud papa and go, wow, this has really grown. And this is all because of the team yes. that we have in place at the FCA. What, what's the feeling you get? Obviously, a little bit of anxiety this time of year. But when you're <laughs> when you're able to stand on that porch at, at YCC and see mm -hmm. everybody going, and the reason they're there isn't necessarily because of the bottom dollar, but it's because of the guy that rides in the sky. Amen. FCA, right? So fellowship is our first name. So if we do an event that's fun and has some food and you know, obviously some great fellowship. Chick Fil A. Chick -fil -A. I mean, I'm in. Yeah, come on. Let's go uh, just for that reason. But, you know, I was stressed out majorly the first time. Sure. And, and I, I didn't know what I was doing. You know, again, you talked about being humble. Uh, I just really felt that God told me to call some people that knew what they were doing. Yeah. Back to that mentor idea, like uh, Bob Stoffer, you know, one of the former directors. Here. Sure. And I was scared to death, Bob. You know, he's very, he kind of sets up on a pedestal for me. Um, but I had to kind of buck up and say, okay, this is important. You know, so let's make the call. And boy, did he just guide me right through it, you know. But I don't think I slept for like two or three weeks <laughs> before or after because I'm not a natural person that wants to reach out and talk to people. But sometimes, again, you got to stick your neck out there. And it's, it's a worthy cause for Jesus Christ. So that's you're an moment. introvert. I, I, I'm a natural introvert. No kidding. Yeah. So my wife says you, you are no longer that. But 
uh, God does things, yeah. you know, with you. He, he molds you. He makes you who you're supposed to be, not who you want to be or think you want to be or what somebody else is telling you to be. You know, but the, the bottom line is follow God. I love it. BK, I can't thank you enough. It is always a, a humbling experience for me to have you sitting across the microphone. Uh, thank you so much. If there's anything we can do, you know, it's only one call away uh, for here for, for FCA always. Um, if people want to get a hold of you and, and see how they, I know they, Sean talked about it. How do people get a hold of you? You know, we're all over social media. I think that's just an open door anytime. Uh, obviously, go on to Facebook, FCA Steel Valley. Very simple. That's the name of our ministry, FCA Steel ba Valley, or Instagram as yeah. well. You know, FCA underscore SV for Steel Valley. So, and always hashtag FCA SVY. That's it, man. <laughs> Bob Kimple, ladies and gentlemen. Thank guys, you. thank yeah, you guys amazing. so much for, for being part of, of YSN from day one. And uh, thanks for sitting down and talking to us. And uh, don't forget to get involved with the FCA golf outing coming. What's what's the day? June 10th. June 10th. We have two shotgun starts this year, you know, in the morning around 8 a.m. And then we do a luncheon for everybody at the at the turn, so to speak. And then 1.30 p.m. Everything would be on Facebook, FCA Steel Valley. And we'll share it as well. Make sure you check out that. Sign up today. I know slots are going to fill up very quickly. Uh, so get a foursome and get out, glorify God, and hit that doggone golf ball around for 18 holes. It's not about who wins. Everybody wins when you're at the FCA golf outing. Bobby Campbell, thank you so much, buddy. Thank you.